Once an instrument is installed, the payload volume can be sealed by the installation of a hatch. The hatch can be installed in any orientation and is fastened in place using simple quarter turn fasteners. The hatch is part of the light seal that prevents onboard light from entering the payload volume. Also part of the light seal is the light curtain, which attaches over the hatch on the front face of the rack. There is also a light shroud available known as the kayak shield, which can be installed in place of the hatch and the light curtain to allow crew access to the payload volume while still maintaining a light seal. The crewman would enter the shield here and then cinch it around his waist. The kayak shield would be used when manual operation of an instrument by the crew is required. To protect the interior pressure pane after the scratch pane has been removed and while the crew is installing or removing instruments within the payload volume is the bump shield. The bump shield is essentially a transparent internal shutter that is deployed or retracted using a slide handle on the left side of the rack. The bump shield is deployed when the handle is in the down position and is retracted when it is returned to the up position like this. On the right side of the rack is a similar slide handle for opening and closing the external window shutter. This capability is provided so that the crew can open and close the shutter without having to disturb a payload or compromise the light seal once a payload is installed within the payload volume. Below the payload volume is a stowage locker for wharf hardware, like the hatch and the scratch pane. Here is the hatch in its stowage bag. As you can see, it fits easily into the stowage locker. Likewise, the bag containing the scratch pane can also be placed in the stowage locker along with the hatch cover. There are also three wharf provided stowage bags, two large ones like this and one small one for temporarily stowing miscellaneous equipment associated with the payload. Fittings are provided on the stowage bags so that they can be attached to any sea track rail. These bags are normally stowed in the stowage locker along with the kayak shield and the light curtain when not in use. Located within the upper section of the rack above the payload volume is the Wharf's avionics suite. The avionics suite includes the rack interface controller or RIC, the payload ethernet hub bridge or PEB, and a mass storage device capable of storing up to 13 gigabytes. The RIC is the central controller for the rack, and the PEB is the rack's data controller for the routing and format conversion of data. Data can also be stored on an individual user's mass storage device of choice connected directly to a payload. Another piece of hardware available for use is the small camera bracket. It is intended for use with still and video cameras and other instruments that do not require a high degree of stability. The bracket can be attached anywhere on the payload shelf using its four 1032 thumb wheel screws and could be mounted coaxially with a primary payload sensor if desired. As you can see, it has a manual pan and tilt capability and the position of the camera relative to the window is also adjustable. Over the last four decades, photographs of the Earth taken by astronauts have changed the perspective with which we view our home planet. The high-resolution cameras and sensors of the Earth Resources Experiments Package were focused on the Earth. With the advent of the wharf and the International Space Station's optical quality science window, there is now for the first time the capability to perform multi and hyperspectral remote sensing of the Earth from a manned space platform. The International Space Station is an excellent vantage point for monitoring the Earth's atmosphere, oceans, and land resources, and provides an affordable platform on which such instruments can fly. From within the wharf, they will be able to study these components of our planetary system, as well as the interactions among them to further advance our understanding of the effects of both natural and human-induced changes on the global environment, in keeping with NASA's mission to understand and protect our home planet and improve life on Earth. I hope this video introduction to the International Space Station Science Window and the Wharf has provided you with the necessary information to begin planning your payload.